Hello everybody and welcome to video 8 in this Python OpenCV tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to perform a live face and eye detection slash tracking in Python using OpenCV. Now the code for this is actually very straightforward. If you don't really care about how this works, because I am going to try to give kind of a brief explanation of the idea behind these classifiers and, and how this works so seamlessly. If you don't care about how that works, then skip forward in the video. There should be some timestamps that actually will tell you when we start writing all of the code. Anyways, in front of me here, I have the code that just shows our webcam. So this will literally just display our webcam on the screen. That's all this is going to do. And I just put this in here beforehand because there's no point in writing it out again. I've already shown how to do this in previous videos. Anyways, what we're going to use to do this uh, face detection and classification is something called a har cascade. Now, a har cascade is a pre-trained classifier, so something that we're not going to train ourselves that already knows what it's looking for, essentially, that will look at an image and will try to pick out specific features in that image. So a feature could be something like the distance between two centroids, like, you know, centroid meaning like an eye or something. Uh, I could be like the different colors present in a region. It could be the, the edges or the shapes that are present. Um, there's a lot of different features. It's very difficult to describe a feature, but anything that you could take from an image that is not just the entire image itself could be considered a feature. So these classifiers have been trained on hundreds of thousands, if not millions of images. And what they've done is they've gone through and they've kind of determined which features make up a face and which features make up eyes. Now, each classifier has its own very specific task. So it's been trained on just faces or just eyes or just birds or just cats or whatever it's classifying. And when you feed it an image after it's already been trained, what it does is it looks at that image looks for the presence of features that indicate a face or indicate an eye or whatever it's looking for. And then if it finds those features, it tells you, hey, there was a face, it's present here. Or, hey, there was a bird or an eye or whatever, it's present here. So that's kind of the idea behind it. I will mention that there is some pretty good documentation for this that I'll link to in the description that explains this in more in depth. But what I discussed is the very basics. It just knows what features make up a specific image or whatever it is it's trying to classify. You feed it a new image. If it finds those features, then it says, yep, we found it. It's located here. All right. So the classifiers that we're going to use are pre-trained. They already exist and we don't have to download them or anything. They're actually just by default. They come with OpenCV. So I'm going to start by loading these classifiers in. So I'm going to say face underscore cascade is equal to and then this is going to be CV2 dot and then cascade classifier. And we need to pass the path to this classifier. So the path to this classifier is going to be the following. It is going to be CV2 dot data dot har cascades plus and then the har cascade that we want. I'm just going to copy this in because it's very long and I don't want to mistype it. So let's put it in like that. So the first har cascade that we want is our frontal face default dot XML. So this is the path to where these are stored on our system. And then this is the specific classifier that we want. that's pre-trained. So all you do is just put the one that you want in well, it will give it to you. So that's what we're going to do for face. Again, this code will be in the description in case you don't want to type all this out. And then we ne need to do one for I. So I'm going to say I underscore cascade, and I'm just going to change this to har cascade underscore. And this is just I like that. All right. So now we have our two har cascades loaded in. What we need to do now is use them so we can see that we have our image, which is being shown here. So before I show this image, I'm going to convert this image to grayscale and then I'm going to pass that to my face cascade and the face cascade is going to return to me all of the locations of faces. So I'm going to say the following CV2 dot CVT color. I'm going to pass the frame and I'm going to say this is CV2 dot and then color underscore and then BGR and then two gray like that. So we'll say that gray is equal to that line. Now, the reason we need grayscale is because just like many algorithms here in OpenCV, uh, it requires a grayscale image to perform this classification. So now that we've done that, I'm going to say that faces is equal to and then face cascade dot. And this is going to be detect multi scale. And then what we're going to pass here is the image. And two other parameters, I'm just going to write them in and then I'll describe what they are. So this is the function detect multi scale that you use from the cascade. And again, what this will do is just return to you the location of all of the faces in terms of positions. So what are these arguments? Well, I actually found a really good stack overflow post that I will again link to in the description uh, that describes what these are. 
So before we continue, I need to thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews. They also have a product called Systems Expert, which is meant to teach you about system design fundamentals and how to ace your system design interviews. So with that said, check out Algo Expert and System Expert from the link in the description and use the code Tech with Tim for a discount on both platforms. All right, so I've got the Stack Overflow page open. I will link this in the description so you guys can read it for yourself. But the first parameter that comes after our base image, and notice that we're always having the base image first, is going to be what we call our scale factor. Now, to go into a little bit more detail about how the Har Cascade works, we're going to be given us, uh, we're going to give the Har Cascade, sorry, an image of an arbitrary size. We don't know how large this image is, or the Har Cascade, sorry, doesn't know how large the image is going to be. So what that means is that we may have to change the size of this image such that the Har Cascade has something that it can compare it against to. So imagine we give the Har Cascade an image that's like 10,000 by 10,000 pixels. Well, it probably wasn't trained on images that were 10,000 by 10,000 pixels. So what that means is we need to shrink this base image down. And what this scale factor is telling us is how much we should shrink this by at each iteration. Now, the recommended value here is 1.05. And what this would mean is that we shrink the image down by 5%. So we'll keep shrinking the image uh, in kind of a scale pyramid fashion that I'm not going to discuss that is linked here. There's some resources you can read for yourself. But the idea here is that you probably want to put a value about 1.05. Uh, the one that we actually picked is 1.3 and the smaller value you pick is going to lead to higher accuracy, but slower performing algorithm. Whereas the larger value you pick is going to lead to less accuracy, but a faster performing algorithm. So you can kind of mess around with these values. And if you notice that your face detection isn't that good, then make this value a bit smaller. If it's good, but it's taking a really long time, then bump the value up a little bit. Now, the next value after here is min neighbors. Now, min neighbors is a parameter specifying how many neighbors each candidate rectangle should have to retain it. So what this is going to tell us or what the Har Cascade is going to do is return to us a bunch of positions of potential faces. It's going to say, I think this, 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 and like, you know, a million things are faces and they're probably all faces of just like slightly different sizes. So this is saying, how many candidate rectangles do I need that are, say, overlapping in a specific area before I determine that this actually is a face? So this is pretty much saying, how accurate does the algorithm need to be? Because if it just has one rectangle in an area and saying that's a face, well, that might not actually be a face. That might be a mistake. It might have miscalculated. So this is saying we need to find at least say five rectangles or 10 or whatever number we put here that are in close proximity to each other before we determine that this actually is a face. So as it says, this parameter will affect the quality of the detected faces. Higher values result in less detections, but with higher quality, three to six is a good value for it. Then we have min size and max size, which are really straightforward. Min size is the minimum size of a rectangle uh, for one of the faces. So you can make this, you know, if you, if you know the size of your face is going to be larger than 100 by 100, then you would just make this like 100 by 100, right? And then max size, it's the opposite of this. This is um, what is the maximum size of a face. So you obviously don't want to be detecting faces that are like maybe half the size of your image if you know the faces are going to be really small. So you could throw that in. But those are optional. You don't need to pass those. Uh, and you can see here we didn't pass a min or max size. We just had a value of 1.3 and then min neighbors of 5. So this is going to give us all of our faces. So specifically, it's going to return to us rectangles that are kind of drawn around our faces or represent what it thinks of faces. So what I'm going to do is say four, and then I'm going to go X, Y, and let me just make sure this is right. Yeah, and then W, H in faces. Now, the reason for this is it's giving me a rectangle. So I will take the X, Y width and height of that rectangle. And then what I can do is draw a rectangle on my image. So I will say CV2 dot and then rectangle and then I will pass my image which we've called frame here I will pass my x y here so let's go x y for this top left hand corner of my rectangle then for the bottom right I will pass my x plus w and my y plus h and then for the color we can pick what we want this to be let's just make it blue so 255 0, 0. and then line thickness will go with five all right so there we go that will draw our rectangle now what I need to do though, is I need to figure out the area in my image that is the face. So I actually want to grab the face itself. I don't want to just draw a rectangle over it. The reason for that is I want to use that area 
so to actually find my eyes because I know that my eyes are going to be on the face. So if I find the face, then I can pass the face to my eye detector or eye classifier, and then it will tell me where the eyes are. So I'm going to say that my ROI, which I believe stands for region of interest and then underscore gray, so G-R-A-Y, is equal to, and then this is going to be gray, which is my gray scale image, right? And it's going to be from the following. So we're going to start at X and we're going to go to X plus and then W. Now we're going to start at Y and then we're going to go to Y plus W. And the reason we're doing that is because this will tell us the location of our face, right? We're just getting this rectangle from our grayscale image and storing it in an ROI grid. Now we're going to do the same thing for color. So ROI underscore color is equal to and then frame and then again, same thing X colon X plus W and then comma Y colon Y plus W or Y plus H. What am I doing here? OK, so now we're going to get this area from the color image, which is the frame. And you'll see why we need both of them, but we're going to pass ROI gray to our new eye classifier. And then we're going to just draw on ROI color the, um, what do you call it? The rectangle. And actually, I just realized that these needs to go in the other order. I always make this mistake with the slices. Uh, we need to have Y go first because of the way that we're, we index values in this array. So let's do that. And then think, there we go. Okay. Awesome. So that should be correct. We need to do Y first because it goes rows and then columns. Common mistake. Now what we do is we're going to look in this grayscale image ROI gray for any of the eyes. So I'm going to say the following eyes is equal to and then I cascade and then dot. Uh, what is this? What do we call this? Detect multi scale. Then we're going to pass our ROI underscore gray like that. Then we'll pass the same thing. One point three and five. All right, so now that we have our eyes, we want to draw all of these eyes. So we're going to say four and then I in eyes like that. And actually, let's change this so that we're going to say uh, E X E Y E W E H. So I X I Y I I width I height. Then after this, we'll just draw a rectangle. So let's say CV2 dot rectangle. We'll draw it on not frame, but ROI underscore color. I'll explain this in one second. Then we're going to draw this at first E X. E Y and then bottom right hand corner is going to be E X plus uh, E W and then E Y plus and then E H. Then our color will make this uh, green. So zero two fifty five zero and then line thickness can again be five. All right. So now that we have this, this is actually all we need to do. I'll show you this working in one second. But let's do a quick recap. So we are going through uh, and we're going to just look at the frame from our webcam, right? We're going to convert that frame into grayscale. We're then going to find all of the faces in that frame. We're going to loop through all of the faces, which are really going to be rectangles. And then we're going to draw a rectangle for whatever this rectangle represents. We're just going to draw the face essentially or a box around the face. Then we're going to figure out the area in the image. So the actual pixels in the image that represent our face. So we get the gray and we get the uh, the pixels in the colored image. Now this right here is actually a reference to the original frame. So if I modify this here, this will actually modify the original frame. So keep that in mind. So the reason I'm doing this is because I want to find the eyes only on the face, right? So now that I have the face, we find the eyes on the face. But this is going to tell me the location of the eyes. Well, at least this will on our ROI gray. Now, ROI gray is not the same size and it's not the same image as our original frame. So when I draw my eyes, I draw them on my ROI color, which is the same size as my kind of grayscale portion right here. So what that means is that I will actually draw them in the correct location. Now, I know I'm explaining this kind of horribly, but the idea is that if we were to just draw this rectangle right here on our actual image, if we were to draw it on frame, so all our eyes, we drew it on frame and we didn't draw it on ROI color, these eyes would be in the wrong spot. The reason they would be in the wrong spot is because this is telling us the location of the eyes on our ROI gray image. So on our face, like you're just looking at the face, it's telling us the location of the eyes relative to where the face starts. So we need to draw it relative to where the face starts. So on ROI color, not on frame. Otherwise, they're going to be in the wrong spot. So hopefully that's clear. But that's why we're drawing it on ROI color, because ROI color is the same size as the image that we detected the eyes from. Then what we do is we draw 
not the image. This story should say frame like that. And then what we can do is, well, just run this. So let me reactivate or deactivate, sorry, my webcam and let's run this and let's see if this is working. All right, so there we go. We can see this is indeed working. I can kind of move around a bit. You can see it's tracking my face. If I turn my face, notice it doesn't really keep track of it because it doesn't obviously detect the side of the face. And then I can open my eyes. I can move around. And well, you get the idea. This is the live face and eye detection in OpenCV and in Python. So I think I'm going to leave the video here. That's all I need to show you in the next video. If there is a next video, I'll see if I want to do one or not. We may potentially train our own Har Cascade classifier. If you want to see how to do that, leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and also leave a comment and let me know. And I may potentially make a ninth or maybe even tenth video in this channel where we do something like that. So with that said, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I will see you in another YouTube video.